Hello everyone, how are you? My name is Elizabeth Willett, Senior Fertility Herbalist with the Natural Fertility Company. We are the naturalfertilityshop.com and naturalfertilityinfo.com. As you read, we're going to talk about how you know if you, or how you, how long you should stay in your natural fertility program. So um, you read the title, but how long should you stay in a natural fertility program when you're on one? So not long ago, um, I talked about how you know your natural fertility program is working. And this one kind of piggybacks on that. How long do you stay on that program? <laughs> Um, whether you're seeing its benefits or not. So I hope this is helpful for some of you who've been on programs or might wonder um, how long to take certain things or be on your program. Uh, we've also received a few questions about this lately. Um, I've been working with some women who've been on Vitex, for example, for numbers of months and are wondering how to continue it or if they should. Um, they're wondering if uh, things like maca are, can be continued long term and stuff like that. So I thought this is good timing. It's a good time to talk about this. There are some general rules. Um, hi. Uh, there are some general rules to follow, and that's really what this what this periscope is meant to cover, some really general rules. This may differ for everyone depending upon your fertility health issue, your overall health, how long the issue's been present, a lot of different factors. So just take these as general rules, and um, if you want some more specific support, work with your healthcare provider, the practitioner you're working with, reach out to our herbalists on staff with the company, um, and we can walk you through some of those things. Um, the number one general rule I want to talk about are uh, nutritional supplements. Most nutritional supplements can be considered or can be taken uh, long term. And by long term, I mean we generally talk in terms of six months to a year. There are some that can be taken longer. For example, you've probably been on a multivitamin for many, many years or an omega supplement for many, many years. And um, that in general is thought to be fine. So um, things like maltase, prenatals, um, calcium magnesium supplements, vitamin D, vitamin C, folic acid, um, royal jelly even in terms of fertility superfoods, things like fertiligreens, omega supplements, or um, you may have heard them referred to as essential fatty acids, are all things that are fine when preparing for fertility to take long term. A minimum of three months, up to six months to a year, and for some things longer. These are things that are um, Insurance for your diet, they are things that we need, our entire body needs to function regularly on our, an, at a healthy level or in a healthy way on a regular basis. That's what um, nutritional supplements really are. There are notes though, notes to remember. Um, if you have a nutrient deficiency for which your doctor is suggesting you take a specific amount of a nutrient, for example, um, vitamin D, that's a common one these days, Please do follow their advice and ask them how long you should take that amount before you retest to see if the dose needs to come down or if your body's managing that level on its own now for some reason. That's not easy to do through diet with vitamin D alone, but through sunshine or um, whatever. And each nutrient will differ. Um, so talk to your doctor. Talk to your doctor about revisiting, retesting you to see if the level that or the amount that he has prescribed initially is what you need to continue to take after three or six months. Follow his guidance, his or her, of course. Um, please don't take mega doses of anything nutritional. Um, it really is important to first get the nutrients you need from your diet, your whole food-based diet. And those of you who are transitioning to or follow a pretty strict, I guess, fertility diet are getting a lot of nutrients from the whole foods you're eating. Um, we use supplements secondary to diet, so focus on diet first. Understand the foods you're eating and what nutrients they provide you. Um, if you think you have a nutrient deficiency, work with your doctor to determine what that is, and then learn how to support it through supplementation or maybe increasing the, um, the types of foods that contain that nutrient too. But don't take mega doses of anything. Um, the general suggested use on a bottle is what should be followed. And um, definitely reach out to the manufacturer of the product you have first. <laughs> Then rely on someone like our team at the Natural Fertility Company. If you're still not sure, if you're still not getting answers, talk to your doctor or pharmacist. They should know these things. Consider talking to a nutritionist. Um, I realized the other day when I was walking through our general mainstream grocery store that they have two full-time nutritionists on staff now. People there all day during um, business hours to answer nutrition-related questions. So consider even just popping into your grocery store to see if there's a nutrition nutritionist who can help you. Um, or, of course, um, if I didn't say this already, talk to your doctor about it. Um, 
there are nutrients that can be overdone. Now, I know that nutritional supplements are natural, and natural is safe, um, but there are times when you may think you need more than you really do, and there are times when um, too much is not a good thing. <laughs> more is not better in all cases. Um, this is often more true with synthetic or lab-derived nutrients um, than it is whole food nutrients, but it can still happen. So pay attention to the amount you're consuming of a specific nutrient if you're curious about it in your diet and taking in supplement form. Um, and try not to overdo any general suggested dose for a day. If you're worried you're taking too much of something, you need to talk to your doctor or nutritionist or whomever you're working with, a practitioner who knows your health and can um, help you know if you are taking too much, right? So um, use those people as resources for sure. Again, first and foremost, we need to be trying to get these nutrients from our food, and then we can supplement with nutritional supplements um, as a boost, as a booster, as insurance. Now on to herbs. Um, there are many herbs that can be taken long-term. Again, long-term is at least three months, but six months to a year in general for herbs. Um, we think of those herbs that are uh, provide nutrition, so fertility superfoods, things that fall into that category. Um, Maca would be one of them. Royal jelly would be one of them. We think of herbs that are called adaptogens. Adaptogens are herbs that help the body maintain homeostasis, maintain a level of health that it needs to function optimally, or return to that state if you've been depleted in some way. These are herbs like um, ashwagandha, shatavari, shizandra, ginsengs, um, mushrooms like reishi and maitake, uh, what else am I missing? There are other adaptogens, but those are the ones at the top of my um, on the top of my head right now. Um, rhodiola, rhodiola is another one. Adaptogen herbs in general can be taken um, long term, as long as you need them, really. Um, in most cases, now I'm not saying years and years and years on end. You know that's not wise. But um, you know, up to six months to a year before it's time to reevaluate how that herb has worked for you or if you need it anymore. Um, you know, there are some times when people take things for so long and we suggest that they wean off after they've been taking something for a year, for example, to see how their body handles um, maintaining balance on its own. And sometimes the body has relearned balance and can do that. So um, if you've been taking something for six months, especially an herb for six months, you're wondering if it's working, it might be time to consider a consultation with an herbalist near you or with our company um, who can help you see if it's been working or not and evaluate whether it's something that you could continue or not. And if you've been taking something for about a year on your own, um, it might be time to think about weaning off of that herb um, to see how your body does by itself. Um, if you have a, a, an imbalance that's been identified, so you've gone to the doctor, you've had all the testings, you have, um, you know, elevated FSH, for example. This is just an example. And you're taking an herb. As I mentioned, it's really good to stay on a program that you've designed to support the body and returning to balance for at least three months. Most people need to be on something for a little bit longer. That's not to say you won't see results in that three months time, but um, it, depending upon how long you've had the imbalance, what caused it, your overall health, your stress levels, all of those things that we take into account, you may need to be on a program a little bit longer. Um, in terms of herbs like Tribulus and Vitex, they really do need to be consistently taken for six months, sometimes longer. Um, each herb is going to be different, and I'm not going to go through them here. Um, so if you're wondering, reach out to someone who would know, your herbalist, your naturopath, um, maybe your doctor. They probably aren't going to know. Our team, we're here to help you figure that out. Um, and then in terms of natural therapies, if you're using a natural therapy, if you're doing something like yoga, meditating, um, the emotional freedom technique, working on affirmations, um, any sort of emotional work or stress reduction work, um, exercise, of course, all of those things are something we want you to continue forever. We really want you to make those changes and have them become your normal, your lifestyle. That's our goal, right? But there are certain things that maybe don't need to be done that long, like acupuncture, um, some sorts of massage, perhaps like shiatsu, which is a more specific kind of massage. It's not so much for relaxation as it is for um, its benefit within the body. Um, there's more to shiatsu than that. I'm not an expert. <laughs> but um, if you're working with a practitioner and they're applying a natural therapy to you, like 
massage or acupuncture, talk to them about how long it needs to be continued um, and at what frequency. They're the experts in those things. Um, don't rely on an internet article to tell you that. If you're seeing a practitioner, ask them, how long should I be doing this at what frequency? And um, what results should I expect? And if I don't see them, what are we going to do? How are we going to change that? Um, you're entitled to have that conversation with your practitioner, and we want you to be doing that. But other, other things like diet and exercise and yoga and meditation and anything you're doing to reduce stress, um, we want you to find the tools that you love that can become your everyday and that you can use whenever you need them. So um, ultimately, back to how long should I be on my program? As I mentioned, three months is minimum. Some women stay on for six months to um, a year, you know, and obviously the supplements and herbs that you take um, might be taken at specific times of the cycle, might not be taken, you know, straight through every month. Others of them may be. Um, so whatever program you end up on, do follow the general suggested use. But what I wanted to talk about more here in relation to that question is, um, how long you stay on it might depend upon the results you expect to see. <laughs> so if you're starting a program and your goal is, or you think that, and you want, and your goal is to, um, for example, ovulate every month when anovulation or not ovulating has been the norm for you for several months, and you forget or you don't think to focus on the little day-to-day -day changes, your program might take longer to show you that end benefit. Does that make sense? So if your goal is ovulation when you haven't ovulated for a long time, but you're not thinking about how your energy levels are different day to day, your PMS has kind of changed, and boy, I guess I didn't have cramps that cycle. The cervical mucus has changed a little bit, or you're perhaps seeing more than you had in the past. Um, your energy levels are better dirt right before your period when it, they um, might wane they might not be great. Um, if you're not paying attention to those little changes that can happen, um, you might not think your program is working as well as it should because you've got this bigger, huge, I want to ovulate every month goal. And I want you to have that goal too, because ultimately, if that's your program, we want to get you there. But my point is, don't forget about those little things. Don't forget about how you went out for dinner and didn't want dessert or you went out for dinner and the salad was more appealing than the pasta. Um, don't forget about how your PMS usually made you wanna scream your head off and punch a hole in the wall, but yet that didn't happen after you started your program. Uh, don't forget about how um, you had a little bit more energy and wanted to go on a walk, whereas before maybe you weren't as, before your program you weren't as apt or interested in going out on a walk or exercising. Don't forget about those little things that can happen. Um, if you begin to try to and start to notice them, you're going to be more motivated to stick to your program. And then hopefully your ultimate goal will happen or you'll notice it's going to happen a lot sooner than had you not. So a um, little soapbox there, sorry, but it's true. The little, the little things are important to notice too. Um, like I said, they're motivating. And if you've had a fertility health issue for a very long time, or if you've been on a hormonal medication for a very long time and you stopped, um, you truly can't expect your program to show you black and white huge changes right away. It's going to take some time. Um, you're going to need to have patience on your program. You're going to need to allow your body to realize that it can, it can make the hormones it needs at the right time in your cycle so your cycle can be balanced. Um, yeah, it just really is going to take patience. And as I mentioned earlier, ultimately we hope that these changes that you make become your lifestyle because we want you to be as healthy as possible um, no matter where you're at on your fertility journey. Obviously we want your fertility health goals to be reached, but we want you to feel great. We want you to feel great while you're working on reaching them and even after, no matter where your path takes you. So stick with your programs um, for at least a minimum of three months. Uh, realize that sometimes it's going to take longer and that if you're not seeing the changes you want to see, uh, reach out to someone who can help you know if the program's right or if something needs to be shifted around, whether you add another supplement or take something away or consider going for um, a second opinion with a specialist or a doctor. Um, we're here to help you with that if you want that help, but there are many other practitioners out there who do that too. All right, everyone, I'm going to close. You're welcome. I'm going to close for today. Uh, thank you for joining me, and I hope you have a great rest of your 
weekend, coming weekend. All right, take care. Bye.